We're gonna, we're gonna call this event to order. I don't have my gavel, it's in the other room. Um, welcome everybody, I'm David Zuckerman, your Lieutenant Governor. Uh, I also, thank you. I, I used to sit in 52 right over there. Um, and uh, I'm giving you the first part of the introduction, uh, which normally is done by some of the uh, amazing legislators who actually organize Farmers Night throughout the calendar year. And this is sort of the bonus extra night because it got canceled from two weeks ago. I'm so glad you can make it. Um, but Farmers Night was originated because in back in the day, when most of the policymakers were farmers markets that often had to come up on horse and buggy or some other form to get here, they stayed in Montpelier all week. And they had a weekly event to have entertainment. Um, and the amazing tradition has continued, not so much out of necessity, but out of community. And there are some amazing uh, legislators who have been putting this on for years and years and years. The current cast of fantastic people uh, includes Representative Sarah Coffey, Senator Allison Clarkson, Representative Bartholomew, and Representative uh, Mary Catherine Stone, um, as well as State Curator David Sheets, who operates the State House as the museum and living museum that it is. Our Sergeant at Arms, of which this year we've had two different ones, not very common. We have two Sergeant at Arms this year, uh, Janet Miller and Agatha Kessler. And I also want to thank uh, the Capitol Police. So if we can thank those legislators and all those folks who make this possible. And the range of artists and artistry that comes into this building each year, from the Vermont Symphony Orchestra, we had Tibetan dance, there was storytelling, um, the, the, this event, of course, and many, many others, happens every spring. So please do come to other events, um, because it, it is this community. And I have to say, look around this room, with it being the event tonight, I see many of the fellow contradance folks that I know and contradance musicians. Um, so it feels very communal for me tonight uh, as well. Um, I do want to just point out a couple details, of course. If chaos erupts and somehow we have to leave the building, you would go out that door and down the two sets of stairs and out. Um, there's also an exit out this way, but you'd have to work your way through more bizarre channels to get out of the building. There's also a couple bathrooms out this way and up the ramp to the left if you need a bathroom during the event. Um, and then I'm going to just say my little personal bit. Um, Pete was a dear friend for me, as he was for many people who are here tonight. And um, tonight's really, really special to me. Um, sometimes people ask me about policy. What do you do? What's the most important thing you do? And as a policymaker, I can tell you that like the things that are most important are when you when you've done something and you and you meet someone on the street or you hear of a story that the work that we've done here has has positively impacted someone's life in some way. Um, it, it's a pretty meaningful, deep, uh, deep emotion. Uh, relative to the hubbub that you see in politics and the haranguing and the sausage making. It's how do we actually affect people's lives. And um, you don't have to be a policymaker to affect people's lives. Um, many of you every day are doing that in your daily lives. And when I think about Pete and how many people's lives he affected and how he touched people and made our state a better place um, from teaching our children the musical traditions and the storytelling of music and the community of music to the, to the calendars that he used to make. Some of you may be familiar with his calendars. Um, Pete was that, that magic that makes Vermont so special. And for me to be here tonight, being able to open this event to honor him and welcome these amazing musicians is incredibly um, special for me. And to the policy side, uh, I worked on end of life choices for nine years. And to see Pete uh, the weekend before he utilized that law and to know that his passing was hopefully more peaceful for him and for family and friends, um, it's, it's this, this that makes being a policymaker 
special. So thank you for being here tonight. And I want to introduce Mark Sustic. All right, uh, thank you. thanks to all the folks that David mentioned. Thanks to you, David. Uh, we wouldn't be here doing this at least as persistently as through two snowstorms and, and cancellations, et cetera. So uh, appreciation to Sarah and, and to David and all, and all the rest. Um, I wanted to stress that in terms of my thinking about putting this program together, uh, it wasn't designed, is not designed as a goodbye, as a goodbye, as a memorial or a final word. Um, it's really, otherwise, it's a hello kind of to the importance of who Pete was, of the importance of what the future is with Pete in it. Um, when I talked to Pete about some memorials just before he passed, he said, well, he thought it was all great, but the, the big part was he wasn't going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> that was the part that he, he didn't like. So let's bring him, bring him here tonight, but let's also bring him into the next place and the place after that, and the place after that. That's a challenge, yes. Uh, so, some of you maybe have a dream once in a while that Pete is in. Uh, that, that occasionally happens to me. But, but this event uh, is designed to propose that there's a more deliberate way to bring Pete into our lives. And that's to put, make, him part, make him part of the future um, certainly tributes and memorials are, are great, but we can also uh, put him in our teaching, in our performing, in our repertoire, in our uh, approaches, our, in our giving, in our caring, our collaborations, and our kindnesses, and so much more. So uh, that's a challenge. That's our challenge. We have work to do to do that, and many people are doing it already, but, and we'll see some of that tonight. Um, I also I wanted to acknowledge that everybody that's playing tonight has a few minutes to do what they're doing. And they could all fill the whole evening and probably a week just about Pete. So I want to acknowledge that. I also want to acknowledge that there's a whole bunch of people here that could be standing up doing this as well. So thank you all for being here and sharing in this way as a recipient or as a, as a giver of, of the program. Um, and continue to share uh, who Pete was and what he did. I want to finish my little uh, introduction here before we have Tom McKenzie come up um, and read something that Pete wrote. It's, called, it's a piece called The Spell. I don't know if others have, have read this. So this is, this is what he wrote a few years ago. It's a summer evening, so perfect it must, be, it must have its own calendar page. You know, you heard the calendar, the holiday calendar. Uh, I'm again on an old man's porch on a fiddle of no great providence. He passes me a melody far older than his grandfather. In a fold of the multiverse where I am the old man, I pass it back, a message in a bottle. He spits, he says, my God, son, I've not heard that one in 40 odd years. Sure gets to you, doesn't it? I wanna be casually, this is Pete speaking again, I wanna be casually clever and say, it's tunes like that that cause me to forget my damn passwords. <laughs> but in, instead, I take a sidelong glance at the midsummer sun, a fat king on his hill, hilltop throne, who, and I believe, I have never been more grateful for anything in my life, who is taking forever to abdicate. Thank you. So, uh, Tom. Uh, just a, Tom McKenzie is up first. Um, Bruce Green, who was somebody that Pete learned a lot of music from. If you heard, uh, heard his first recording, Eight Miles From Town, a lot of those tunes were sourced from, Bruce Green wouldn't claim this, Bruce Green would say, I learned them from somebody else and they learned them from somebody else. So uh, they were passed down to Pete and Pete changed them some a little bit, retitled them. Tom was the logical choice to, to, to do this segment because he knows those tunes so well and I think he's going to do a few. Welcome. But and first. Patty. <laughs> <laughs> Now let's go out to breakfast Just because it's a pretty day Let's hit that joint on the south side My treat, what you say Found a five dollar bill on the sidewalk That's never happened before And another in the pocket of the 
suit I hadn't worn since 1984. Well, it's hard to decide. It all sounds so good. They have narrowed it down to just three. It's the huevos rancheros, blueberry cakes, or the biscuits and gravy for me. And yes, I would like coffee, please. And I don't mean decaf. Could you bring a little milk when you get the chance? Could you make that half and half? We're feeling good, we're feeling fine. Today's agenda's all set. We're gonna end world hunger, see the rainforest, eliminate the national debt. We're gonna find a new source for renewable fuel. First control pill for men. Yes, and when we do, we're gonna celebrate. Go out to breakfast again. Oh, let's go out to breakfast. Just because it's a pretty day. Let's hit that joint on the south side. It's my treat, what do you say? Said it's my treat, what do you say? Thank you, Patty. That, of course, was one of Pete's songs, and I, I thought that was sort of the spirit of him. That was just a perfect one of his songs. It just fit every single checkbox that you should check. Uh, Pete was like a, his river ran very, very deep. And I can't tell you how many times I and other people have been in a jam session. You hear a tune, you say, where'd you learn that? Pete, you think of a song, you hear this song and say, oh, that's a wonderful song, who wrote that? Pete, you're sitting in someone's living room and you say, oh, look at that calendar up on the wall, look at that collage <laughs> art. Who did that? Pete. And maybe you're listening to a record at the same time and you really like you know, the producing, the production of this record. You say, I wonder who produced that record? Pete, you're standing in a chorus and singing a wonderful song and you hear this voice behind you or maybe he's in front leading everybody and you say, man, this guy knows what he's doing. I wonder who that is? Pete. Pete. Every time you turned around, Pete was sharing something that he had learned from other people, and he just brought so much and gave so much back. I'm going to do a, a short medley of two tunes that he was very responsible for, for giving to all of us. The first one's called Coleman's March, and uh, he would teach it to a lot of his, band, his uh, fiddle students because it's a wonderful fiddle tune, and it's such a wonderful fiddle tune, I'm going to play it on the banjo. <laughs> so, and... Um, <laughs> After that, I'll do it another tune that he learned, I think, from Bruce Green, called Shuffle About.
you very much, and thank you, Pete. Tom McKenzie. Um, so, so uh, two weeks ago, we had a couple of folks traveling from Indiana to come here, and got snowed out, of course. And uh, you'll hear more about uh, more about that if you don't know about it already, uh, about the in Indiana connection, the Midwest connection, the scenery-free Midwest, as Pete would say. Um, so. Uh, they couldn't come back from Indiana, you know, make another trip out here. So we're going to hear uh, from Cindy Callett and, and Gray Larson. Uh. Hello, Montpelier. My name is Gray Larson. And I'm Cindy Callett. And we are coming to you from Bloomington, Indiana. And uh, Pete moved to Bloomington, I think it was 1982, and he spent about nine years here, he and Karen, to play with myself and Malcolm Dalglish in the trio Metamora. We had a wonderful years here with Pete. And Pete, while he was here, came to know a man named Lotus Dickey, who was a remarkable musician and a remarkable human being. I knew him very well, too, as did Malcolm. And Lotus uh, was born in 1911 and died in 1987. He was from about an hour south of here, a prolific songwriter and also a singer of traditional Southern Indiana songs and a fiddler who played beautiful Southern Indiana fiddle music. And Pete and Karen learned, spent a great deal of time with Lotus, learned his music and traveled with him and performed with him and nurtured a, a, a loving friendship. And Pete was uh, uh, influenced quite a bit by Lotus, as we all were here in Bloomington. So Cynthia and I would like to sing a song called A Psalm of Life that Pete learned from Lotus and Lotus learned from his father, Marion Dickey. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful song. And Pete is really responsible for spreading this song out among the greater folk music world. He recorded it on one of his albums. Um, it has a beautiful melody and the lyrics are two stanzas from a famous poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Tell me not in mournful numbers Life is but an empty dream For the soul is dead that slumbers And things are not what they seem Thou art to dust returnest, was not spoken of the soul. Let us then be up and doing with a heart for any fate, still achieving, still pursuing. Learn to labor and to wait. Life is real, life is earnest, and the grave is not its goal. Dust thou art to dust returnest, was not spoken in the soul. spoken of the soul. Life is real, life is earnest, and the grave is not its goal. Dust thou art, to dust returnest, was not spoken of the soul. So, we are going to play a fiddle tune for you that Pete Sutherland learned from Lotus Dickey. 
This is a tune that Lotus remembered very late in his life. I think he was in his 70s and he hadn't played this tune since he was, had been young, but it suddenly came back to him. He didn't know the name of it, however, so we all decided to call it Dickie's Discovery. And that name has stuck. And it's a tune that Pete loved to play, and he kind of put his own little stamp on this tune, he made some little personal alterations that I really <laughs> love. So we're going to play it Pete's way. and Gray Larson. There's a great, come on up, Jim. <laughs> There's a, uh, a great old time scene, old time fiddle tunes, uh, southern old time, and certainly other things, but it really sort of lit a fire in, in a lot of ways for a lot of folks. And Pete was central to that. Jim was really central to that. And uh, so we invited Jim Burns to, to say or play or whatever you'd like to do with this little piece of time. Jim Burns. <laughs> <laughs> My fellow Americans. No, uh, no uh, we ran, uh, uh, how I ra ran into Pete, um, you know, when you, when you get the fiddle bug, man, <laughs> you, 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 you kind of go into orbit. And uh, back in the 70s, we ran a hippie bakery over in the Adirondacks, and we used to come over to Burlington and deliver our bread. And... Um, and uh, I, I knew about Pete, and uh, so I, I figured I'd bribe him, you know. I'd go over and bring him a loaf of bread, and uh, there was always be an amazing musician at Pete's house whenever, whenever, whenever I went over there. Any musician who was traveling through Burlington who was a folk musician would stay at Pete's house. And Pete could see I was lost, and so he made me a nice tape, um, a cassette tape, which I still have. And uh, don't throw your cassettes out yet, folks. And uh, here's a little tune called Spotted Pony that comes from that, uh, that, that cassette.
Here's another little tune that was on that, that tape called Prettiest Little Gale in the County O. And um, <clears throat> give that a try. Jim Birds from way over there in New Haven. New Haven, right? So uh, mid mid ladder uh, life, Pete was. I kind of discovered this uh, around the same time we were co-conspirators in some ways of seeing the passing on of things as maybe a core reason and a core inspiration, and out of out of uh, that interest came a group called Pete's Posse. Anybody know about Pete's Posse? Yeah. <laughs> so we've got uh, uh, Oliver Scanlon, who was part of that. Tristan Henderson is here, and I'm not actually sure how the, all of this unfolds. So we had Pete's Posse. I think we, now we have Oliver's Army, right? <laughs> Maybe. All right, would you please welcome Oliver Scanlon and Tristan and whoever else is joining.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. That was, uh, that was a little number that Pete wrote in the old time style. Uh, Pete, of course, loved the Appalachian style fiddle, as you uh, just heard well represented from, from Jim. Um, and he was a great tune writer as well. Come this way, friends. Um, <laughs> And he also had, did this thing that many of us were grateful recipients of, uh, where he loved writing tunes and dedicating them to people, and particularly his students. Um, that, so that was a tune that he wrote for one of his students named uh, Sam Doherty, who lives in Burlington, who's now gratefully a student of mine. Um, and uh, it's called Bragging Rights. If you have brothers, you can imagine where that came from. <laughs> um, Pete had always had lots of thoughts and feelings rolling around in his brain, often at 2, 3 a.m., and he, much of his way of processing the world came out in his songwriting. That is very much true for this next song. Um, it's a, it's a, tune, a, a song on his reflection on the current state of, of where the world is. It's called Second Nature. And I need a note. I need a C-sharp. Do you have a C-sharp? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but... <laughs> Do you believe this weather? These storms so close together, this earth's a troubled mother. Cause we ain't loved each other. We do not heed our teachers. We do not get pictures. We are no chosen creatures. We have no second nature. Big ice is slowly melting. Big forests fall to harrowing, the birds are disappearing, the bees have lost their bearing. We do not heed our teachers, we do not get the picture. We are no chosen creatures, we have no second nature. We do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. The young people are starting to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. Our leaders take no action. They think all science fiction. They live without reflection. They lie with no retraction. We do not heed our teachers. We do not get the picture. We are no 
chosen creatures. We have no second nature. Our hearts by grief are hobbled. In prayerful groups we huddle. Though all signs point to trouble, we still can't pierce our bubble. We do not heed our teachers. We do not get the picture. We are no chosen creatures. We have no second nature. The warnings have been extremely clear for a long time. We are entering a period of consequences. We will not let you get away with this. Right here, right now, is where we draw the line. The world is waking up and change is coming, whether you like it or not. No healing for the injured. No soothing for the anger. No magic can be conjured. No species unendangered. We do not heed our teachers. We do not get the picture. We are no chosen creatures. We have no second nature. All right, thanks, Oliver. So Patty is going to stick around. She's going to sing a couple of things for you. Of course, Pete had a long association with Patty. Won't go into great detail. I can remember uh, the uh, in the Flint space. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the the uh, Winter Tales. Winter Tales, right? And then Woods Tea Company, right, for a while and yes. other stuff. So Patty Casey, everybody. So um, I only get eight minutes, and I don't like to break the rules unless there's a really good reason, so I'm not going to talk very much. I do want to say, I think maybe some of you missed it in the introduction. This is Mark Sustick, and he has been right. keeping... <laughs> He's been the driving force behind keeping this um, going, and just an, an incredible friend to Pete over the years. I also want to thank Kaylee. Kronik, who's doing the sound for us. And I know it's Pete's posse, but tonight it's a little bit of Patty's posse, because <laughs> I, um, I got the guys to join me, so I'm, I'm incredibly honored. Um, we're going to do a, a song of Pete's called The Grateful Place. It's one of my favorite songs that he wrote. I have laughed when I should have been listening Run when I should have stood fast And avoided the signs I should have read twice And spent too much time in the past But I can be ever more grateful be told from a grateful place. There are friends who no longer walk with me. 
I miss them with each step I take. Oh, they shine through my work and they smile through my songs and they speak with the choices I make. I can be ever more grateful. Grateful for every day grace. Whatever remains of this story of mine can be told from a grateful I can't find my purpose And nights when regret plagues my mind And sweeter indeed Will this life seem to me When the time comes to leave it behind I can be ever more grateful Grateful for it story of mine can be told from a grateful place can be told from a grateful Thank you. And then I'll just say very quickly that I had the privilege of spending um, a lot of time the last few weeks of Pete's life. He was um, kind of in a hospice um, right up the road from where I live, and he would call at you know odd hours and say, "Hey, nobody's here," because he had like a schedule, he had like a spreadsheet for people <laughs> to come in and when they had to leave, and. Um, and he'd say, hey, there's nobody here. Why don't you come on up? And, and uh, so I got to spend a lot of time with him at that point in his life. And um, we spent a lot of time talking about um, what happens maybe after you die. And um, so this is um, a song that I wrote for Pete. And I was given a special dispensation to do a song that I wrote. Because mostly we're doing Pete songs. But this is called Everywhere. I know where I left you It was just yesterday But someone called and said you'd gone Now they've taken you away You said you'd board a westbound train when the time came to go Where it goes is a mystery And it's not for us to know So where did you go? Are you far up on the hill? Are you running through the leaves? Are 
Are you standing very still? Ooh, did you make it to the clouds? Ooh, well, you ran down on all of us Like the music of your soul Let the stars turn to dust place to rest Ooh, with a fire crackling close and a cat curled on your chest Ooh, are you singing with the angels are you flying through Are you floating down the river? Or are you everywhere? Oh, I believe you're everywhere. Cause that's where you said you'd be. Tristan. Patty, Patty Casey, of course. So we got one more set um, to do. We'll have to see if we have time to do something at the very end. <clears throat> We're going to try to finish on the, at the allotted time of 8.30. We have the lieutenant governor sitting here, so maybe he can, he can step in and and give us a few more minutes, but. <clears throat> so Emmett and Fiona Stoll spent a lot of time with Pete, um, particularly uh, in, the, in the weeks and months before he passed away. And they were, they, they're star students and, and of Pete's and of the music and all of this kind of piles up and is in their hands. And would you please welcome Fiona and Emmett. Thanks. Um, I'm, I'm Emmett and this is Fiona. Um, uh, I started taking uh, lessons with Pete when I was seven and she was ten. And um, we're just we're real grateful that we got to spend as much time with him as we did and uh, play all the music. Um, we're going to end this how it started, right? <laughs> We're going to have uh, Coleman's March. This is an arrangement that Fiona put together for the young tradition um, <laughs> uh, touring group. And uh, these are some of her harmonies inspired by his on Eight Miles from Town. Thank you. 
So uh, when I saw Pete the day before, the, the day before he died, I played him some tunes, and uh, he's sitting back smiling, and he's like, "Buddy, check your tuning." And uh, I'm afraid I, one of my strings might have been a little out of tune there, but thanks for sticking with me. <laughs> uh, we'd like to invite everybody up to play some play some tunes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Awesome. This is actually a, something that you're, you're going to be able to sing along with, and we'll, we'll march out of here. Thank you for being here. Thanks for the legislature for continuing this tradition, and it's such an honor to be part of it.
and it's uh, it's one of those pattern songs when only two words change each time through, so you'll catch on really, really quickly. So. And we tried to tune too. <laughs> well, that's nice. <laughs> we'll shuffle this off, and we'll do an instrumental first. Yep. Nope, oh, not quite. Waiting for the banjo. Classic. Mark Sustic. 